Hi everyone. I know I missed a week last week and uh, I apologize for that. Uh, you know, with time and everything like that, uh, losing my beard, as you can see, uh, it's traumatic. It's just traumatic. So uh, I'm doing it now. Um, so I'm technically into week five right now. It's Tuesday, November 28th. Um, but uh, not really because of the way uh, the machine breaks down. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but I did finish week four. Um, so today was uh, 19, treatment number 19 out of 35. So I'm better than halfway there. Uh, I'm three days behind uh, because of Thanksgiving. For one, they didn't do anything on Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, I mentioned before the machine breaks down like once a week. Uh, the only week it hasn't broken down is uh, the first week, week one, that uh, the week of, uh, of October 30th that I started. It's the, only, it's the only week it hasn't broken down. Uh, I missed two full days besides Thanksgiving because of that, um, but it's broken down more than that, and they fixed it and called me back in later. So um, it's, a, it's a very unreliable machine, and at this point, I'm almost waiting for him every day just to call and say, ah, oh, it's, you know, it's broken down, don't come in. Uh, you know, and nobody wants to work uh, Saturdays or, you know, act like a real business. It's a hospital, not a really business. Um, so that they just tack that on the end. They, they put the onus on me, the customer, to put that on the end of my treatment uh, and extend my treatment. So uh, I guess that's how hospitals work. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, very unreliable machine, very disappointing. It's very disappointing. And this is at Wilmot Cancer Center, by the way, in Rochester. Uh, they have one machine in the area, and it's kind of a piece of crap. So, uh, as far as reliability goes. Um, so, all right, enough of that. So, uh, I guess I'll start at week three. Um, and uh, this is the week I noticed uh, I'm sitting there eating, and I looked down, and there was hair on a placemat. Where the hell did that come from? So, I, uh, you know, didn't take me long to realize it's coming out of my face. Uh, and um, I went to the bathroom, and, you know, tugging at it. And, uh, it's still falling out everywhere. And couldn't figure out exactly where it was coming from at first. But uh, they're hitting me here with a beam. It must be. And it just, there's a bald spot there. Just pulled right out. But it seemed like it was coming from over here, too. So, you know what, I said bump it I just uh, I just shaved the whole thing uh, and that was a uh, that was something I hadn't seen in you know 20 plus years uh, this I haven't seen in 20 plus years wasn't real happy with it um, so uh, you know it's I'm still not entirely used to it um, I'm trying to grow you know something here something here but uh, for whatever reason, it's growing very, very slowly. And I don't know whether that's the chemo or the radiation. I, I don't know what it is, but it's really slow. Um, but, you know, again, I, I got to do what I got to do, and uh, we'll get through it. Um, but other than that, week three was kind of uneventful. Not a lot happened. Uh, week four, which was last week, um, that's when shit started to get interesting. Um, it's when I noticed uh, my throat getting redder and redder, not necessarily sore, but just drier. You know, my mouth is a lot drier than it was. It, that's I didn't think it was possible, but it's possible. I gotta drink water all the time. Um, uh, my, the back of my throat and the soft palate uh, are red and swollen. Um, you know, the hole in the I guess, you know, in the back of my mouth where my throat is is probably about half the size it's supposed to be right now. It's just with all the swelling and redness. Um, that being said, it's not terribly sore. I can still eat. Um, I can feel it when I swallow. Uh, but it's not excruciating or anything. It's not killing me. Uh, so, I, it, so far, so good as far as that goes. Um, but, uh, you know, that that's red. Uh, my gums... Are, aren't smooth like they normally are. They feel kind of rough. Uh, the inside of my cheeks feel kind of rough. Um, but 
uh, it's nothing that's not expected. It's you know, they blasted me with radiation. Um, but the big thing that happened last week was the pinky toe and the toe next to it on my left foot went numb. Uh, and I felt a little bit even in my right foot, the same two toes. And that's the peripheral neuropathy that's uh, associated with cisplatin. At least that's what I think. I can't imagine what else it would be, right? And uh, neither could the doctor. But uh, so, you know, needless to say, I called them right away and said, you know, I'm feeling this. We need to talk about this. So uh, we got in there and um, all the other chemo drugs, uh, you know, carboplatin and whatever else. I don't remember what he said. Uh are also associated with peripheral neuropathy. So, I mean, you know, I'm not going to do those either. So what they got me on now is something called cetuximab, which is an antibody. I didn't do a lot of research into it. It's It was my only choice. Um, it's not a poison like the um, cisplatin is. Um, and it's not associated with a lot of really awful side effects. Um, you could get side effects from it, but most of those, the awful ones, are on the initial uh, infusion of it. If you're going to get a horrible side effect, like one that will put you in anaphylactic shock, that's when it's going to happen. Uh, after that, uh, the worst side effect that I've seen that you can get is uh, a rash, a s acne like rash from, you know, midsection up. So, um, and my medical oncologist said that over the years he's only seen one person not develop that rash. So I can, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get that rash at some point. Uh, I took my first one last Thursday. He said it takes about two weeks to develop the rash. So maybe in two weeks, you guys will see what I look like at 15 years old with zits all over my face. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out though. Um, but I got through the initial dose with no problem. Everything, you know, and I'm noticing maybe, you know, a spot here, a spot there, rash. I, I don't know. Uh, so far, so I, I'm definitely going to develop something. Um, but I guess it can get pretty bad uh, if it's stage it. And uh, uh, he gave me um, uh, hydrocortisone cream and, uh, and an antibiotic to help, you know, keep that rash down. I don't think it'll eliminate it completely but it'll help it um but the good news no nausea at all after this tux med i mean i went to the gym the next day it was nothing it was just like any other radiation day really um so i'm i'm pretty happy about that uh pretty happy about that um because that was terrible really that's that nausea was like I said, the first week it was awful. They reduced the dose, and it was it was better, but it wasn't completely gone. Um, so it's you know, I'm liking the cetuximab a little bit more. Um, so I'm in week five now, Tuesday, week five, two days into week five, uh, and you know it just my everything seems to be getting progressively drier, redder, um, maybe maybe a little bit sore. Uh, the only thing that I'm actually eating right now are skinned cucumbers, plain pasta, and ground beef. And the ground beef was a little bit rough on my throat today, so I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing that. But uh, uh, the plain pasta and the skinned cucumbers go down okay. Um, and it's, you know, I can't taste anything. I have no taste. But I don't, I don't know whether it's, you know, some foods... Whether it's the smell of them combined with maybe there's a, I can taste that particular food a little bit are just unpalatable to me. I just really can't eat them. Um, and those three things are really the only, about the only thing I found that I can eat and not, you know, gag on it. Terrible. Um, you know, I, I can do, uh, I, I lied, I can, I can do um, cottage cheese too, but it's not great. It's, it's right on the edge. Um, and for any of you guys that are watching this, that perhaps you're going to go through this, uh, let me warn you, bananas will burn the hell out of your throat. Don't eat them. Don't eat them. Uh, it's like eating acid. 
I, I don't, I couldn't believe it either. But yeah, after week three, don't eat bananas. Um, so, you know, but other than those three things, I'm also eating a lot of protein. They want me to eat a lot of protein. So I'm not eating it. I'm, I'm mixing it into a uh, um, slurry at some point or, you know, just mixing it with water and injecting it into my feeding tube. Uh, or in the morning, I do a, uh, a, a shake or a, a smoothie because I got to get the calories in because I have lost about 20 pounds since I started. Um, but I gained 10 pounds before I got here, so it's net 10. Um, uh, so I use a uh, Orgain. It's called um, Organic Nutrition Shake mixed with a, in a Nutribullet with an apple, a banana. As long as it doesn't pass your throat, it's good. You can put it through your feeding tube. Uh, about 40, 50 grams of protein powder with uh, branch chain amino acids. I add to it uh, L-arginine and L-ornithine amino acids as well. Healing acids, you know, or healing amino acids help you, you know, recover for your muscles uh, and your tissues. Um, that's in the morning. Then I do, you know, two, three, four protein shakes during the day, just injected into the tube because I just don't want to gag them down. Um, and then, you know, along with the cukes, the pasta and the beef, um, twice a day. Um, and then before bed, I'll do 50 grams of protein powder with the branch chains, the arginine and the ornithine again, um, you know, to help, uh, your body rebuild while you sleep. Cause when you sleep is when you rebuild. Um, and then, uh, you know, in one of the earlier videos, I, uh, mentioned things I'm doing to try to prevent or at least lessen the, uh, the effects of the side effects of, you know, cisplatin and the radiation and everything else. And, you know, there's not a lot you can do, you know, that you're going to get hit with some of these, trust me. Uh, but, uh, one thing I read that I found interesting and I'm trying it and it seems to be working is, uh, glutamine is the other amino acid that I've always taken. Um, but not as much as I'm taking now. So I'm doing if you look online, you, you know, you'll see some stuff about it, but it's uh, 10 milligrams three times a day mixing water. And that I do drink. Um, and that's supposed to help with uh, mucositis and peripheral neuropathy. Clearly, it did nothing for peripheral neuropathy. So don't count on it for that. But I did have oral mucositis. And I, um, I was doing two a day of the glutamine. I upped that to three. And after about a week, the mucositis went away. So, I don't, you, know, the, you know, the white spots in the throat, pretty much gone. It doesn't hurt anymore. Uh, so it, that actually seems to work. Um, the salt and soda rinse, that they'll, you know, if you're going through this, they'll, they'll give you the recipe for it. It's baking soda and salt. That's... Uh, that cleans out your mouth, uh, balances the pH. You, you can't overdo that. Just do it and do it and do it and do it. Um, I, I'm kind of back and forth on it because it's awful, is uh, the um, aloe vera juice. While I could taste, it just, it's awful. It's terrible stuff, taste-wise. Um, but now that I can't taste, um, I've started doing it again plugging my nose, doing it, you know, swishing it around after treatment. So I'm going to try to do that a couple times a day now, uh, you know, just to keep these down. Uh, the swelling, or the, uh, the redness and the soreness down. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned before, protein, lots and lots of protein. Um, they want your, you know, your body can't rebuild itself without protein. Can't do it. Um, if you're a vegetarian, you know, uh, get pea protein. Or, or plant-based protein of some kind, as complete as possible. But protein, a lot of protein. Um, I'm probably doing 180 to 200 grams a day right now, whereas normally I'd be like 150. So uh, it's protein, trust me, do protein. Um, I'm taking my vitamins and minerals, uh, particularly magnesium, because both uh, cisplatin and cetuximab will reduce your uh, blood uh, magnesium levels, I guess significantly. Um, 
so I take a thousand milligrams of magnesium a day to try to try to pass that. But yeah, they, they keep an eye on that too. And if it goes down, they'll just give it to you intravenously during your infusion, anyways. Uh, Anti-inflammatories. I take a, uh, not uh, Advil or anything like that. I'm talking about um, omega threes. I take a lot of omega threes and uh, uh, curcumin, uh, the spice there. Um, I take about 450, 500 milligrams of that a day as well. Just try to keep the swelling down as much as possible. Um, I still go to the gym every day, and I'm going to continue to do that until I can't. Uh, I'm a huge believer that exercise is, is you know, beneficial for you, obviously, I, I, when you're not sick. Uh, but right now, um, I, I really think it's going to help me, you know, reduce my recovery time um, when I come out of this and uh, it's just it, it can't hurt and I'm gonna do it as much as I can uh, water they told me that that I should be drinking 64 ounces of water a day so it's not a lot really if you if you think about it it's not a lot of water um, but they want you to do that to ease to help your kidneys flush this stuff out, right? Because they don't want it running through your kidneys so concentrated. So they, they want this stuff in there. Water will flush the, the chemo out, along with the byproducts of what the radiation is doing. Um, so, you know, in my head, 64, I can do better than that. I'm about 130 ounces a day now. And that's just the water I'm drinking. That's not including uh, the uh, fluids in... Uh, you know, in the shakes I make and in the smoothies I make uh, throughout the day or um, the water I use to flush my feeding tube. So it's uh, I'm, it's probably more in the 160, 100, 160, 180 a day. And I'm peeing all the time, but that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm getting it out of me. And that, that's really what you want to do. You want to get it out. Um... And that's about it. I uh, I can't think of anything else I need to tell you right now. Um, but, you know, any questions, let me know. And uh, I think I covered everything, and I'll see you next week.